2023 was the year of the track sauce, and last year we saw a bunch of new models. In this video, I'm gonna rank them worst to first. Let's go. There were so many brand new track saws released in 2023. I was starting to wonder if we weren't gonna see a Milwaukee Star Wars Special Edition, or maybe even a Lego edition of a track saw. Just so many options out there. Let's figure out what's best for you. If you're interested in any of these track saws, I'll put a link in the description and the pinned comment to help you find them easier. Now keep in mind as we go through this list that just because I say it's the worst of 2023 doesn't mean it was a bad tool. It just ranked lower than the other ones that are ahead of it. First on the list was the last one released in 2023, the Skill track saw. This is actually a really good idea that's coming out of Skill. I like to see this type of innovation, although this is bottom of the list and there's a couple of reasons why. But the pros of this first are, it has plenty of power to do most anything you're gonna to wanna to do. If you're just breaking down sheet goods, especially just making cross cuts, say you wanna take this to the store. I know a lot of people do this. They take it to the store, Home Depot, Lowe's, and they break down the sheet goods so they can fit them in their SUVs or vans, etc. It just makes a really good portable track saw to be able to do that with. A lot of people use it for that reason and it's a good use for that. Or just in the shop, breaking it down into smaller pieces so you can get it on the table saw. This is a good saw for that. What I don't really recommend this for is thicker hardwoods or longer cuts. And of course, dust collection on this really was awful, but that's because it's really a circular saw that's kind of turned into a track saw. It is made for a track. They designed this for the track but because it doesn't have that shroud like the other track saws have, you get really, really poor dust collection with this model. Also really didn't care for, if you try to move this back, the guard just kicks up on there and it causes a little bit of issue. And if you were cutting with this and tried to move it back, especially on plywood, you would probably get a really bad kickback with that. I didn't really care for that either. And finally, the track only has one rail that this saw glides on. It makes it a little difficult to slide, and it just I feel like it would be better if they had two rails like all the other track saws in this video, or on the market, really. Overall, I think this is a good option if you're in the skill line and you want like light duty breaking down of sheet goods, etc. Other than that, there's better options. <laughs> Next on the list is the Ryobi track saw. There's a few pros here, but there's some cons here that I think kind of bring this to the bottom of the list. Now on the con side of the Ryobi track saw, you got a few here that may, may really steer you away from it. And I think there's better options out there unless you're in the Ryobi platform. First and foremost is that riving knife. It operates different than any other track saw that I've seen. It's literally under the blade. You can't plunge with this saw. It's under that blade and it'll, you just, it's just, it's useless for a plunging saw. If you're just cutting straight cuts or plywoods, et cetera, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you are trying to make those plunge cuts, it's going to be annoying. Next up is the dust collection. It's just okay. The connection isn't a standard size, so you can't really connect a standard hose to that, like a dust extractor hose. For instance, my Festo hose, just, it won't stay in there. And even when I do get it in there and have it on, dust collection is just mediocre on this saw. Uh, I would like to have seen that improved a little bit. Another really bad drawback on this saw is the fact that it deflects away from the base a lot, mainly because the base and everything's really all plastic, all the connections. If you put any pressure, lateral pressure on this when you're making your cut, it's really gonna throw your cuts off on thicker hardwoods, etc. I do not recommend this for thick woods. Another drawback here is the Ryobi track saw is not compatible with other tracks. So for instance, Festool, Milwaukee, um, Wynn, Powertech, uh, there's several other, Makita, they all will work on each other's track. Even the DeWalt will work on others' tracks. So it's just one of those compatibility issues here. You can't just pick up another track somewhere else. You have to purchase the Ryobi tracks. Another con is the depth of cut on the Ryobi track saw is not the greatest, especially if you try to do bevels. Even through a tube of six or a tube eight here, you can see it just didn't go all the way through on the full plunge cut. So you're not getting a lot of depth here. The last on the cons list on the Ryobi, the depth stop adjustment is far inferior to the competitors on this list. That's why I just really only steer you toward getting this if you're the Ryobi platform and you only want to cut sheet goods, plywood, MDF, etc. For the pros on the Ryobi is one, it's in the Ryobi battery platform. This 18 volt platform, one plus, you got hundreds of tools to choose from. So even if you pick up the track saw only to cut sheet goods, MDF, etc., you can still use those batteries on a ton of different tool options depending on what you want for your shop, your house, etc. Another positive is it works really well for plywood. 
MDF, those type things, as long as you don't want a plunge cut. If you're just making cross cuts similar to the skill, for one, it does have those two 27 and a half inch tracks that you can take apart and put, store those easily, transport those easily, and then put them together there at the store and make your cuts and be able to break down those sheet goods so you can fit everything in your vehicle. Also, if you're just using this in the shop, it's not gonna take up a bunch of space. It does a really good job. It has plenty of power for MDF and plywood, etc. But that's really where the pros end on this one. Next on the list is, it's not really a track saw, but I'm gonna throw it in here because it made such a huge impact this year. And it's the Milescraft track saw guide. You can literally use almost any circular saw that you have, put it in this saw guide and be able to have a track saw in your shop without a huge expense. That is a huge pro on this because it's only about $100 and you get the two tracks that's basically the same length as the Ryobi or the Skill or the Rigid uh, with the two 27 and a half inch tracks, you're able to cross cut on your sheet goods and it made a really good saw for that. I was very impressed with this, especially just pairing it up with my uh, circular saw. It was able to cut a good square cut on a two inch thick piece of walnut. Now this is going to depend on the quality of your circular saw also, because if there's any deflection in that circular saw, then it will probably throw those off a little bit. I did see a tiny bit of light in one of the places where I was cutting, likely from that deflection. But if you got a good circular saw, like a high quality one, you won't have any issues here. Mainly, I think this is great, again, for the sheet good crowd, if you're just wanting plywood, MDF, especially breaking those down into smaller pieces, this is a very good option. Now, there are some cons to this system. One is dust collection, again, very similar to the skill. The dust collection is abysmal on this thing because of it's a regular circular saw, dust is going everywhere. There's really no way to help keep that collected on a regular circular saw, unless you know a different option, let me know in the comments. That's really a, the main drawback. The second drawback is you can't do bevel cuts on this because if you tilt that blade over, it's gonna wind up hitting the track. It's just not meant for that. This is a 90 degree cut only, but for that purpose at $100, I think this is actually a better option if you don't wanna invest in another battery platform or you're not already in those versus the Skill or the Ryobi. That's why I put it ahead of those two. Next on the list is the Rigid Track Saw. It was impressive, out of the box. I thought this was a really good saw. There are some drawbacks here, but overall, I think this is, and I, I always hesitate to call this a budget option track saw. It isn't at budget price range as far as track saws go, but man, is this thing nice. I have really enjoyed having this in the shop. Let's go over the pros and I'll throw in the cons. Now the pros are pretty good dust collection for this saw. And, and I really appreciate the build quality. This is a much better built track saw than the Ryobi. It doesn't have any deflection. You got a really, really nice depth adjustment. I really like that. The fit, feel, finish of this saw is top notch. It's all, I think this is all magnesium based uh, metal. So you don't have any plastic construction here where everything joins together. Uh, there are some plastic pieces on here, but the main components of this are really well made. Plenty of power to cut through most anything you're gonna want thick hardwoods, plywood, MDF, etc. Now, one of the things I like most about this rigid track saw is the depth stop adjustment. It works very well. It's easy to adjust and it has a lot of good like visual indicators on there for on track, off track, etc. I think they did a very good job with this. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Also on the bevel cuts, it is very similar to any other really good track saw out there. It works extremely well just to be able to move those bevels, the indicator's clear, you know exactly where you're putting this on uh, certain degrees, etc. They did a really good job overall with this saw. You can buy this in a variety of configurations. You can get the two 27 and a half inch tracks. There's a 60 inch track or any combination of the two. I think this is one of those where if you're looking at like a Craig brand or this, I would really steer you to this. I think this is a better built saw. It works really well. I like all of the adjustments in there. Anti-tip, like it's got most everything you want. The riving knife works like it should. You can plunge with this saw. In other words, it's not like the Ryobi that comes under the blade. It's just an overall well-made saw. As far as accuracy goes, I was highly impressed with this saw. Good 90 degree cuts on a thick piece of walnut, as well as a 45 degree bevel cut, perfectly 45 degrees. So if you need a good powerful saw that's accurate at a decent price, the rigid may be in your market. Now, what are the cons? First, it does have the proprietary tracks. It's a big word for a redneck. It's just like the Ryobi, and no, they're not interchangeable with the Ryobi either. These are their own thing. You can't use this saw with any other track on the market 
And I think that's kind of a drawback. I, I don't like that. I like that some of the other ones are interchangeable. You can find deals on tracks or just have different brands or whatever. This is one of those drawbacks. There is no variable speed on the rigid track saw. It's one and done. Uh, unlike a lot of the other ones like Festool, Milwaukee, uh, and some of those other ones have the variable speed, which is really nice to have depending on what you're cutting. Uh, you may use that. Uh, also, the dust collection hose, the, the hose won't stay in there. It's not deep enough. It will fit a little bit, but it just keeps coming out. I think that's one of those things that if they would have just lengthened this a little bit, made it very much like the Milwaukee or the Festool, then this would have held that hose a lot better and you'd got really good dust collection. I'm sure there are adapters out there you can get and or 3D print, etc., to be able to fix that issue, but that's something, you know, keep in mind if you're looking at this saw. Battery life is mediocre on this. I was using a six amp hour, uh, I say mediocre, it's not amazing battery life, such as Milwaukee, Festool, but it does have decent battery life. Uh, it's not, it's just not up there with the others. I think it could be improved. Now, if you have the big beefy 12 amp hour battery, you can throw this on there, you won't have any issues. But for that six amp hour battery that I think comes with this one, uh, battery life is not the greatest, it's not terrible, but you will notice that you'll be charging a little more often versus some of the other on the market. If you're just cutting plywood, MDF, et cetera, you probably won't notice any battery life issues. When you start getting into the more uh, load heavy cuts like thicker woods and stuff, that's when you'll really notice the battery life drain because it is having to work a lot harder. Probably one of the best track saws that I tested this year or last year, 2023, is the Milwaukee track saw. I think this is the best bang for the buck for most people as far as track saws go. There's a ton of pros here. There's also a couple of cons. Let's get into it. First and foremost, pack out. This track saw was a gateway drug to pack out. <laughs> I had never owned a pack out anything in my life. I had a couple of organizer boxes from Milwaukee, but they weren't pack out brand. This got me into it. I think this is one of the highlight features of this saw as far as pros go if you order the combo kit you get the pack out it has the custom foam inserts if you're transporting this to the job site or you keep it in a tool trailer tool truck this is a very good better than festival sustainer box to keep tools in it's my opinion anyway i have been really impressed with this even for the shop i keep it over on the floor behind you there it's just easy to store this saw out of the way all the parts and pieces that go with the saw it's easy to keep up with organization is king whenever you start trying to work more efficiently you know where everything's at now the plunge cutting feature on this saw yes you can plunge with it is done right the riving knife comes out and under the blade as it plunges down it's well made i like the way they did that thank you it also includes an adjustable splinter guard that lets you drop things down this is much like a festool that you can adjust this splinter guard that helps keep your plywood and stuff like that from splintering and it also helps with dust collection and another thing i liked about this saw is the dust collection the dust collection worked extremely well uh, for a track saw it has a pivoting pivot, pivot a pivoting dust port that fits my festool hose and there's other adapters out there that you can get if you have a different type of connection this was done well the adjustments on this saw top notch i really like the depth stop adjustment it does have an on track and off track indicator you can use this off track and speaking of off track there is an indicator line right here on the edge or the front of it so if you're actually using this for a circular saw you'll know exactly where you need to cut to get to that zero. The bevel adjustments are also very nice. There is a very clear indicator to let you know exactly what degree you're at when you're cutting. And as far as accuracy goes, this thing is dead on. You can cut perfect 90 degree, even through thicker woods and the bevel cuts. You get plenty of depth cut. Everything that you want in a track saw is here on this Milwaukee. You also get the variable speed, plenty of power, really nice made base this is actually a really wide base helps keep it nice and stable and it does have anti-tip so if you're doing that 45 degree i really like that feature this saw also has a scoring feature so if you're really worried about when you're cutting plywood especially messing that veneer up there's a little switch right here you flip it forward drop it down make your first pass it's going to score that it's going to help prevent that tear out then you just flip the switch back and then you're gone you can just make the regular plunge cut from there on I like that feature. I also like the warranty on this. You get a five-year warranty on this tool, a three-year warranty on the battery itself. It's a very solid warranty for a tool. Anyway, other than rigid with the lifetime service, of course. Another pro is the fact that this track or this saw will work on Festool tracks, Makita tracks, Powertech, et cetera. So this is a compatible saw with various manufacturers of tracks. 
Another positive that this Milwaukee has standard tracks is the fact that you can get accessories. This is my favorite accessory for any track saw. This is the TSO GRS 16. It basically turns this into a giant speed square. It makes breaking down sheet goods super fast. I'm like the fast kid alive. He's the fast kid alive. I'm just whoosh, 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 get this thing done because you only have to line up one side. That's why I love this little square. Very well made, top quality tools. Again, that's one of the reasons I like standard tracks because there's so many accessories available. And when you get into the, like the Rigid or the Ryobi, there's just not any accessories available for those at this time. I would be surprised if TSO didn't come out with a Rigid one at some point. Another positive on this saw is battery life and power. It has plenty of battery life. I was able to cut 75 four foot strips plus two more feet there. That gave me 302 feet of actual cutting on the battery that came with this which was the six amp hour XC battery. The power of this saw going through thick hardwoods, you're not gonna have any issues there. Also, this comes with a very nice blade, actually. A lot of times track saws or any saw really comes with a mediocre blade. This is a really good blade. And it's a standard six and a half inch blade that you can purchase any brand, really. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some cons here. Uh, number one is if you're just gonna use the bag for dust collection, it's awful. It winds up getting stopped up in here. It doesn't really do a very good job of that. I think that you really do need a dust extractor with a track saw if you're gonna use them, especially indoors. Another con is I wish it had anti-kickback. This just doesn't have it. It does have the riving knife, which is gonna prevent you from getting the blade pinched in the hardwoods and stuff. But man, I wish it had some anti-kickback feature. Even if I remember right, the Craig has a, a basically an anti-kickback to where it will only slide one way. If you try to slide it the other way, it binds it up. They could have incorporated that on here or something similar to the Festool that has that anti-kickback technology. If the saw leaves contact with the track, it shuts down the blade. That's a very nice feature. I'm sure it's patented, but I wish that Milwaukee would have come up with a way to do that here at this price point. And that might be also another con for some people is the price of this saw. It's, it's up there, but they have regular sales. And I think honestly, Best bang for the buck, as far as track saw goes, if you want power, accuracy, all the nice features, this is the saw to get, even over Festool, and I'm a giant Festool fan, have one there. I really love my Festool track saw, but man, is this a very good value for what you're getting overall. The M18 platform also is a very good platform as far as battery tools go. I think, I really don't think you could go wrong if you bought this saw. I don't think you'd ever be disappointed with the quality and the performance on it. That's why I think it's my top pick for 2023, new saws that I tested, but there is some festivals to talk about. One of my favorite track saws of all time is the TSC 55 KEB track saw. It's one I have here. I love this saw. This is a premium track saw if you're in the market for one of those. Now, Festo come out with two new models of track saws this year. It's kind of impressive. Number one has a scoring feature on the front of the saw. <laughs> it's genius, I like it. I like that a lot. It's got that little tiny blade up there that makes that score cut. It's a little cute, actually, a little deep, deep, deep. Man, it's just awesome. I think it's a really good idea, especially if you're cutting a bunch of plywood or other woods that will splinter on you. I like that feature. It's a good option to have. I'm glad they added that to the lineup. Festool also come out with the TS60 track saw this year, which boasts of more power than this saw, faster RPMs on the blade than this TS55. So the new saw is zero to 62 millimeters deep, and this saw is zero to 55 millimeters deep. So basically you're getting more power, more cut depth on the new version versus this version. If you already had this, no need to upgrade unless you just want that extra capacity. I've never had any problem with the power on this. Both of them also had that anti-kickback technology. So I think Vestal did a really good job upgrading this year, but not really a significant upgrade over what you already have, unless you need the scoring feature or the bigger depth cut. Now, if you'd like to see a review of the TS60, I'd be, I'd be happy to buy one and do one, just let me know. But my friend Drew Witt over at Whitworks already did a review on it. You can check that out. Just search Drew Witt Festool track saw. You'll see it compared to the wind track saw, but he is the one that I get all of these dust covers from as well. I'll drop a link to his shop in the description. Now moving into this year, what track saws would you like to see reviewed on this channel that I haven't done already? Please comment and let me know. Now I have recently done the DeWalt track saw review, but that wasn't a new saw for 2023, which is why it wasn't included in this video. But if you want to check that video out, all the reviews to all the track saws that I've ever done will be linked in the description. In the meantime, you should go check out the Milwaukee track saw review right there. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Or if you're interested in the Craig track saw, I did that a couple of years ago. You can check that one out right there.